Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Brendan Kleinman, who is actually in an equally sunny Los Angeles, just up the road. How are you doing, Brendan? Brandon? Good. Excited to be here, John. Let's get it. Let's get it on. Yeah, absolutely. And Brandon's a serial entrepreneur, having successfully launched three large consumer companies, Laurel and Wolf, Vesta Home and Birthday App, uh, with the backing of some of the world's top investors. Uh, and anybody who's ever gone after VC recognize some of them, Benchmark, A6Z, CRV and 8VC. Uh, and Brandon leverages technology to make experience and products once exclusive to the elite available to the broader audience. And we love that. Uh, and in this stage of his uh, career, he served uh, in one early stage of your career, you served as a Disney Imagineer. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and other creative agencies. What we're going to talk about today is the secret power of using birthdays and special events to build relationships, both business and personal, and how to make it fit in with your life. So, um, uh, Brandon, uh, just give me the genesis of the background of how you came to uh, Birthday App, how that how that whole idea came about in the first place. Yeah. So, I mean, without going too far back, mm -hmm. I'm a story nerd. Like you said, the beginning of my career was building experiences at Disney or like from scratch. And all of my the things that I've ever built are built on this idea that like, you need to you need to understand the story that someone's telling themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a fun side project after I got out of my last company or kind of replaced myself as a CEO of my last company, where I was interviewing friends, parents for them uh, to tell their life stories. And it, everybody was buying these things for their parents and their grandparents for their birthdays. And I started to think about how birthdays are this thing that is are universally celebrated, yep. both professionally and, and personally. And they tend to be this touch point for no matter where you are in a relationship, you always reach out to your people. And so I started thinking a little bit, how would I, how can I make it easier and more high fidelity for mm -hmm. people to connect with each other on their birthdays and then make sure, you know, that experience was the best it could be. And then, you know, the end of the, the, the kind of the end of it was there's all these amazing gifts and and cards and things that people can send for for birthdays as well as other holidays but birthdays mm -hmm. especially and what you see like we've done deep research i can talk about in a bit yeah. is as thoughtful as you are most people only really think about shopping for gifts or moments about a week sometimes two <laughs> out from the event and so it's not that like I am pairing you with the thing that you like the best, or yeah. I am pairing you with the thing that would be how I represent how I feel about you. It's much more this idea of what did I just see in the last 14 days? Like that is in life, I guess, in general, but this yeah. especially, the exposure effect is really what chooses how you celebrate these people. And so the idea was if we can get, if we can be the context for reminding you that these important moments are coming up for you, we can also be the people that connect you to these the best possible ways that you can celebrate or create an experience with somebody. Yeah, no, I, I love that because I mean, mostly, yeah, it's the last thing you see, but it's also nowadays it's, Ooh, what can I get delivered in time? <laughs> yeah, there is like this whole, I mean, I don't want to go too far off track sure. on here, but there is this, this whole amazing idea of ritual. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know about you. I have this, I have, there's a very, there's this, a, a deli in Los Angeles, uh, called Langer's. I think it's the best sandwich in the world. And every year, it just sort of happened and it's now gone for about 10 or 12 years that I just pick somebody in my life and I end up going getting lunch there. And it's mostly different people every year, mm -hmm. unless it's, you know, my significant other. But um, it's this idea that like we avoid these things because we're so dialed in to kind of routine and like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever's closest. And if you just make it a little bit easier to actually create these these habits and these these things they become really special and it does not extend only to social relationships i think you see it in the people you like most in your office you see it in, like you work with you see it in brands like there's almost like a, there's a luxury to uh to effort even if it's not that much effort that really does build a bond 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with you because, um, and in some ways, I mean, I, I really like what you're doing because in some ways you've got things like LinkedIn that have, I think, almost cheapened it, you know, because they say, oh, you can say happy birthday or you can say happy work anniversary and you get all of these, but you know, it's just happened to pop up on someone's feed and they click the button. I mean, how much effort is that? I mean, it's nice, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really do much for you. Sometimes it's actually an anti-signal. Yeah, that's it's true. Like, if you remember like, back in the day with uh, Facebook, you know, you get your, like, uh, your college neighbor's <laughs> neighbor to be like, happy birthday. And you're just standing there thinking, like, did he mean to wish Brandon Kleinman a happy birthday? Or was this for somebody else? <laughs> yeah. And so there is this, this sweet spot to making it easy to, easier to be thoughtful mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't look like, you know, Repetition. And there's a big, not to get into like the, the weeds, there's a monster change happening in how professionals and CPG and, and companies target um, their customers as well. You're seeing all these kind of like the way to reach out via social ad targeting is skyrocketing in price. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but the, the Surgeon General came out in May um, and they said, they talked about how social media is problematic for how people feel about one another, loneliness. Um, there's some data problems to it. And this is a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. There's been 18 Surgeon General warnings in the history of, of the US. And almost all of them within 18 months were heavily regulated after the announcement. You know, everything from drunk driving to um, violence on television, you get the rating systems. But there's this history of you get the warning shot and then 18 months later, um, they come in and they regulate this thing. And so I think there's going to be an overnight, not even a gradual right. sea change on how companies and professionals end up targeting their customer bases based on this. And I think, I hope not, but I think it's going to be very, very difficult for marketing and, and acquisition executives uh, who are building relationships with their customer base overnight to maintain some of these things. And so this idea of diversifying into ways to connect with your customer base that are not some of the traditional players like Facebook and Google, yeah. I think are going to become acutely powerful uh, come sometime in the next year and a half. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you because one of the things, I mean, it was happening before the pandemic, I believe, uh, where, you know, people were starting to sort of noticed the in, they wanted more human interaction, more authenticity, all of that. And certainly the pandemic accelerated that. And I think today's people's antennas are up around authenticity, as we just as you as we were just talking yeah. about. So just tell me about when you were when you were building this and, and your strategy here, this seems to me like it's a much more kind of authentic way of, of actually interacting and 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 more personal, more 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 real, if you like. Yeah, I think, so one of the things that we notice, um, there's a way to favor people in the app. It's not a plug for the app. I'm actually, I'm leading to the point. Mm -hmm. But people on average favorite 12 to 14 friends whose birthdays they get three separate notices for, two weeks, one week, and an extra day in advance instead of just the day, the day of. And I think what you've seen, and you kind of hit it in the head, and I think you've like your fingers on the pulse there, is that post-COVID, we have smaller circles. You know, I'd like to say that like, you used to have friends that you'd see yep. twice a year at parties or at like a certain event. And so now when you reached out back to your friend, that group of friends called the third tier, uh, third mm -hmm. ring of friends, the only shared experience you have is remembering the shared experiences you had three and four years ago. There hasn't been anything new. And so it's almost impossible to kind of get the engine going. And so I think people have, are trying to invest deeper in, the, in these closer relationships. And so, my goal here is it's so hard to find a touch point that's meaningful to a friend and you know secondarily how to show up where it's not socially weird like if you go too hard on a birthday it's like i don't know you like that but if you go not at all it's kind of like oh i expected to hear from you and so we're really aiming to make it easy to be thoughtful in a way that doesn't read like happy work anniversary happy birthday whether it's pairing you with like a local you could, you're going to be able to get a a table at a restaurant locally yeah. to you that you can just kind of like gift to your friend. It's these little things. Now, the reason I think people like quirkiness so much is because it doesn't feel copied. It's not even yeah. about the gift itself, but when you get something that's odd or even a little bit weird, like in your mind is like, oh, I know I, they can't give this to everybody because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of them. And so we're really focusing on this idea of 
making people's brains feel like this is not a thing that everybody's getting. Yeah, no, and and you know, I, I love that. But I also like what you touched upon there, because I do think, uh, I agree with you, I think people are shrinking their universes uh, of, of their friends. And I think that's a good thing, because I think at the end of the day, I mean, particularly as you get older, I think, you know, having, you know, the quality over quantity um, is, is much better. And we live in this fake world where people have been measuring like, oh, look at all the friends I've got across the world. Look at all the people. It's, per it's performative. It's like it's this performative, performative thing. Where like, so it's funny, you know, they always do the happiness studies. Harvard did one uh, that's like lasted, I think, almost a century, the longitudinal study. And you probably know this, but you know what the number one thing for long lives was? Like there was literally only one variable that was able to kind of carry over as some type of correlation toward long and happy lives. You know what it was? What, relationships? It was number of relationships. That was it. There was nothing with money. Even genetics mm -hmm. was offset a little bit. But it's this kind of this idea. And man, you hit it on the head with like COVID and everything. It's so hard to find reasons to reach out to people now too. The world is still in this weird, almost like purgatory, you know, where like it's open, but like your patterns are different. And like, and so we're just in the business of making it easy for you to be like, hey, I was thinking about you and I thought you might like this or I was just thinking about you. And then you get to take it from there. Obviously, we don't get to build the relationship. Sure. But man, that first outreach is so hard. And if you got somebody helping you and not making it awkward, like I think that's like 85 mm, percent of yeah. like what this stuff is. So what have you seen then uh, in terms of when people uh, when people use your app and they reach out with things that people aren't expecting? Because I, I think that's the other thing, too, is w we love being pleasantly surprised and particularly being pleasantly surprised by somebody who we actually care about what they what they think of us or whatever, or even if it's a business relationship to be surprised because we, we just get surprised negatively nowadays or we just go hmm that's what i was expecting but the positive surprise is so it's so powerful yeah uh great question you know there's this funny theory there's a guy this book called the hit makers uh derek thompson and he talks about there's all this research on why things catch and his big take was always that you want something to feel 80 percent familiar and then 20 percent surprising like you said mm -hmm. like that is the core characteristic for all these things that really catch within especially entertainment industries. And I think it's it's why food works, like a surprising new restaurant. We have this really funny thing on the app. We call them bobbleheads, where basically you can take a picture and it cuts a, a, out your face and it puts it on. There's you know really good cards, there's silly cards, there's pop culture stuff. Um, we also have experiences coming where it's something that's like, you're not gonna have to skydive, but like you might end up going and taking like a little architecture tour of LA with like a little glass of whiskey. It's, it's, it goes different for everybody, what they want. But I think it's this idea of a friend reaching out. And it's kind of why it's like really nice when somebody recalls a memory that they kind of are signaling they care about with you. It's, it's this feeling of like you end up cherishing kind of like this familiar connection you have and then doing something that's like off to the side. And so we're, like I said, with experiences, we're really kind of digging into that. Mm. And uh, and uh, and what have you seen? What have you seen so far, though? Um, uh, you know, as you've as you've launched this, I mean, what what is the what is the some of the feedback you've been getting? Because I'm always fascinated when when new things happen like this. What what, what are people yeah. saying to you? It's funny. We have done. This is probably the extent of the marketing, which is ironic because mm -hmm. obviously my background is in marketing. But we have grown to of user base of about 30,000 active users just from word of mouth in a very short amount of time. And the thing that's been the funniest is that I, we always joke that it's like, uh, it's like a black hole. We have like a better retention rate from uh, people who there's like 65% who use our app, literally use it uh, multiple times a week over the course of almost 18 months, which is like two times what Instagram does. And that's not to, to plug the stat. It's this idea of that every morning, you know, you get into the routine of seeing you have to reach out to. And we've had, we had this like funny kind of game internally where we would get emails. You get a few emails, I'd say a day 
about people suggesting things that we could do for gifts mm -hmm. or telling stories about reaching out to a, a friend or, you know, one of my favorite ones is my brother who I figured would never use the app. He <laughs> used, he's, a, he's, a, he's a real estate broker, right? And he ended up, he had a deal with the client. It didn't end up going through years ago. He ended up just sending them, uh, he called it, it, it was cute how he wrote it. He was like, go get yourself a bagel this morning. I guess they had an inside joke about liking bagels, right? Uh, on, on the person's birthday. I didn't talk to them in I think a year, year and a half. And, you know, the guy said, thank you, bought him a bagel. And then I think it was three weeks later, the guy texted him was like, hey, I'm going to check this property out. Will you go meet me there? And they ended up doing a deal together. Mm -hmm. But you know, we were able to obviously uh, put together something where we reminded him to reach out. But I think what was special is that he kind of took what we could do in the app. And he, to what you said, he like made the extra five or 10% effort by calling out the inside joke. And so I think we're seeing people in industries from a professional standpoint who are really good at investing and kind of doing the social thing, using this as a tool to just do more of it. That's not creepy. Right. Right. And I guess the other part too is because we're not connecting, you know, in, in real life as much as we used to, I mean, you take even like salespeople, or whatever, you know, used to be out there doing calls all the time and they'd be like, Oh, I'll bring something. Oh, maybe I'll bring some bagels to this guy. I'll do some, yeah. nobody's doing that anymore. So, I mean, it gives you an opportunity to be able to do this. But, but as I said, what I like about what you're doing is, is that it requires that extra bit of thought and yeah. that personalization piece. And because we've seen so much like fake personalization and automation, and everything is, as I said, people's antenna are up. So uh, if you get something with that extra bit of thought in it, it actually, it probably has an outsized impact on you. Oh, totally. I actually think very clever. Like, uh, you know, everybody talks about AI kind of coming yep. and making everything automated. But man, people do not give credit to how smart and uh, intuitive people are. What mm -hmm. I think you're going to end up seeing is... I think even if it's subconscious, we're going to, as we get exposed to more of the same yep. kind of automated systems, we're going to know, even if we can't describe it, what seems uncanny valley weird and not human. And to your point, I think that our ability to discern between what's real, authentic, and what's not is going to expand and adjust, or I guess evolve is probably the right word, with how the technology goes. Like we're not going to stay static as the technology gets it gets more like intense with this kind of stuff. We are going to grow with it. And so what I think you're going to see as people invest in all of these automated systems, kind of what you said, the value of being authentic and just doing the extra five or 10% with like an inside joke, or sending yeah. something that like you heard them mention one time, a whiskey they like, or like a, a rest, a type of food they like. I think you're not going to get the same credit you got before. It's going to be exponentially more because you're just going to see more people believe because the tools of automation exist, that they're the right way to go. And those that do just a little extra are going to absolutely lap those that avoid it. Yeah, no, I I I hundred percent agree with you because I think people's antennas are going to get more and more up, and they're going to, and that's why I mean I think there's personally I think there's a whole other ethical discussion over, you know, do you have the right to know whether it's a real person or a bot or a AI or whatever that you're interacting with? Personally, I think you should, but yeah, you know, other people would argue differently. But that's going to be a a big consideration of people. They're going to be very suspicious because that's what we are by nature. Anyway, we're going to be, oh, this is all fake. So anything that adds that piece of realism to it, I, I think is going to stand out. Yeah, I think in general, like people just totally underestimate. You talked about the antenna. Mm -hmm. Underestimate like how quickly people read other people like people are not dumb people get it like if you think you're pulling one over on somebody almost i'd say nine times out of ten you are not they're just like kind of passively agreeing that it's better to go with it than not and especially over the long term i think just investing in in connections not that i don't want to call it not that hard yeah. you just have to be a little bit consistent and take one extra second and you know, it's, again, I can't, although we do have a little consultancy internally, um, I can't make you good at being, nobody can make you good at being kind of thoughtful per se. Mm -hmm. yep. But what you can do is you can increase the exposure effect that doesn't work against you. And so 
I'm merely out here going to people who are just trying to figure out a way not to work, have to reach out to people they love in a weird way. And I'm giving you like an actual opportunity. One of the things you asked about some of the, the habits yeah. that we've seen, we've had a couple of really clever users know that sometimes people kind of get drowned by outreach on their birthdays. Yep. And so there's an unnamed real estate broker who <laughs> was clever enough to take his birthday calendar and reach out three to five days early um, for every birthday and be like, hey, I know your birthday's coming up. Um, you know, here's a coffee, whatever it is. And even if the gift was a little bit basic, sure. he basically got to show up. And even I think the idea of intentionality where you see it on the calendar and then you have to count back yeah. three days sounds like nothing, but holy shit, excuse me, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> um, like you're just different. You stand out, you stand out as actually have made having made an effort in order to do it. And this, I mean, we're using birthdays as a focal point, yeah. mm -hmm. but like there are tons, one of the funniest, um, so in, in banking, they give these things like they're like deal trophies, essentially the day a deal closes, they send, right. you know, you know, little glass statue or whatever, but like, that's a birthday. Like yeah. you put that in a calendar and you, for working on something with somebody and you hit them up a day or two before the day of, like you guys are celebrating like a shared work birthday. Anything that reminds people that we have shared a connection and like, I, it's important to me to not let it die. Not even in like a too emotional of a sense. Mm -hmm. It just reinforces the idea that like, I would like to continue doing stuff with you if the time, if the time is right. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot, you probably know better than I, but a lot of the research today is showing that people just want to be seen, heard and understood. And I think part of what you're doing is, is the scene part, you know, you're saying, yeah, yeah, I see. I remember you. You're important. That's, you have it. Exactly. I think this this idea. It's tough. You know, yeah. double time with the isolation. Like, I always think about my own career, not to kind of show too much personal stuff, but the times that are most stressful, at least in my life, are when I don't really have a feedback loop if what I'm doing yeah. is the right thing. It's not failure. It's not success. It's this idea of not knowing which one is happening. Mm. And you start to go crazy. Relationships where it's like... Yeah. I don't know if this person likes me because I've heard from them in a while. And it's not about them not liking you. It's literally yeah. stressful because you don't know where you stand. Yes. And so anything <laughs> you can do to be like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Or like thinking about you gets both sides out of this weird, uncanny prison of like, did everybody just forget? Like, what's what? what, what is it? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Well, listen, Brandon, uh, this has been great. All of Brandon's information will be below this video and you can see birthday app, uh, birthday.app. But please, before we go, just describe the app where people can get it. Uh, of it's available on all platforms. Yeah, thanks. And this was super fun. Like, great way, mm -hmm. great way to, uh, to do an afternoon. But we're called Birthday App and it's like a little magic trick. We literally, you open the install the app in the App Store and Instantly, you get a birthday calendar of all the birthdays of all your contacts, even if you don't know them in your phone. We know the birthdays without you having to do anything. And you get a little push in the morning and whose birthdays are coming up today. And if you've told us that you cannot miss this birthday under any circumstance, you will get birthday, uh, a notification for that particular person two weeks, one week, um, and then two days in advance. And there's ways to send cards, there's ways to send gifts. And I guess the last piece that I'll add is. This is secretly being used by many, 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 many people. And so it's just like a secret weapon, like I said, to go mm -hmm. show up and say what's up to people. And you'll be surprised how much everybody wants to talk to you once you send them a text. Yeah, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to download it myself because um, historically I haven't been the best. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. We're so busy. Yeah. But even with family, sometimes I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, I even oh, have yeah. somebody. I even have somebody. My family's birthday is three days after mine, and I forget it. <laughs> exactly. There's this funny story in my family. I'm not going to say which my parents. Mm -hmm. One year, one of my parents forgot uh, my birthday, and it became a huge family thing. And mm -hmm. now, I don't know. It's like 15 years later. Like everybody will get in the group chat and uh, on the day before my birthday, <laughs> and like go after this family member, being like, "Did you wish him? Did you wish him?" But like to your point, like you should. You got to get those right, or you're gonna get, you know, yeah. roasted. Yeah. No, I love it. no, I'm, I'm deadly serious. I'm gonna download the app, and I would recommend other people too, because hey, listen, we need a little bit more of that personal connection in the world. We need a little bit more. There's a lot about people out there who would, 
who would benefit so much from that little outreach. You don't know how much it means to people. It's free and forget people, what it means to you. Yeah. Like don't get, don't ever get it confused, guys. Wishing mm-hmm. somebody a happy, happy birthday also makes you feel more connected. Yeah. So go check it out. I appreciate the kind words. And if you don't like it, email me and I will send you a gift personally. Anybody <laughs> who's listening, anyone who's listening. Perfect. Love it. All right. Listen, thanks again, Brandon. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Keep Thank it you. up, John. Great work. Great work. Thanks. Thank you.